Yeah, still walking out. I haven't even got to the Calvinia road yet. And uh, <laughs> I know that's going to take about two days after my last experience. So I'm really hoping that Rob comes around and finds me at some point. It begins when I get high. On a paraglider, it's just me and my emotions guiding my compass. And when I earn so much altitude by applying my skills to harness the invisible updrafts, I feel the need to do something noteworthy with it. I'm not invincible. I'm not stupid. But it's a situation where I come alive if I can let go of my fears and dare to imagine that I'm unencumbered, as if I could really fly. He came right past me and he didn't see me. See you later. Enjoy the stars. Flying is a blend of dreaming and doing. Gliding through the sky, but also remembering the last flight or planning the next one. So as you watch these stories, you can be in that higher plane. Join me on a flight into the land without end, the Tankwa. I wanted to come here, just so that I could be here, doing this. But really, I've been wanting to do this. With altitude, new routes are possible. They say your altitude determines your attitude. So I've been trying to get high my whole life. The film crew here is just me trying to hold onto the GoPro while controlling a collapsible wing with the other hand. So forgive me for the moments where things go upside down. My navigation is similarly being run on a phone and stuck on with Velcro. Maybe we don't deserve to be up here among the real aircraft. It feels more like I've found a secret way to make my body fly. But let's see how far it can go. By now, you might have realized there are two Gregs that work on these films. This is the production assistant Greg, who pays the price of carefree decisions and rash route choices. The one in the air, he's something else. Hey, good morning. I can't get enough of it, so I'm back here at Kaidusi and I'm waiting for the thermals to just start working. The wind's been blowing southeast all the way up here, kind of gently over the mountains. It's still coming slightly over the back, but as soon as it switches around, I think we'll have a really good thermic day. The forecast is for climbs to go very high. So we're looking at a 4,000 meter day. Ooh. And um, not quite as high this side of the Cedarburg, but my plan is to try and go up off here over the Citrus Dal Valley which is a, the first sort of filter hopefully I can make it across that get up on the foothills go into the Cedarburg go nice and deep because the wind's southeast in the start of the day I know that the wind is going to be held back so it's not going to rush through into the Cedarburg there'll be something holding it back there which is gives me the chance to go and explore deep into the mountains Yarr! and hopefully I can get to Krakatoa Peak again or near there and go over into the secret Bido Valley. And that is a, that's a little treasure. Uh, very few pilots have managed to get over and through there. Um, you've got to have lots of height to be able to get there. And then once you're there, there's a magic valley with really good big mountains on either side that leads into the Tankwa Karoo Desert. So hopefully I can get in there early enough 
and get through to the far side of the Tankwa Karoo and maybe, just maybe, I can make it to Calvinia. So I'd like to get that last link through and be high at five o'clock with a light tailwind heading inland into the undiscovered depths of South Africa. <laughs> and I've got my brother-in-law who's going to be driving for me, Rob. He's a really good friend and a student from way back. He's one of my first paragliding students and he's still flying and uh, he's going to be in the van underneath me with a radio hopefully some kind of communication which is also very unique for me uh, and normally when I do this kind of mission it's so hard to organize the logistics that I don't bother and I just kind of go over by myself um, but you might have seen my video where I ended up under a bridge uh, run out of water and uh, in pretty desperate straits so I thought maybe it'll be a good plan to have some retrieve this time. <laughs> okay, so enough talking, let's go flying. Feeling like you're floating, floating in the sky. See the lights are glowing and flicker in your eyes The shadow people everywhere waiting for commands Hoping for a better year to keep up with demand That moment when I've clawed as much altitude out of the thermal as I can. I don't want to get pinned against the peaks by trying to get more or losing it all. But you can see that the Bido Valley is a long way ahead. It's a necky glide over some gnarly terrain. But the reward is the feeling of freedom when I trust my abilities and I believe I can fly. Let's do this. This won't end in a time. But in the end we all die. You've been wondering why. There's a storm in the sky. There's a storm. Now that's the middle of nowhere. Whew. Ah, it's dry out here. 
beautiful place, beautiful space. This is real Rango country. Here in the Tangkwa Desert, animals have had millions of years to adapt to the harsh environment. But the pilot? He's going to die. Oh. At the moment we have water. <laughs> Hopefully, Rob actually finds me. It's easy, look, I'm here. Glider assistant to help. Um, yeah, <laughs> we had a plan. I did brief Rob, so theoretically he's going to be coming out on that gravel road out there. The Durang River over there, when I crossed it, it looked like the drift had been washed away, the bridge. So I don't know if Rob can actually get across that. If he can't, he's got to go all the way back to almost Glen William, all the way around to Calvinia and all the way down behind that thing. <laughs> we didn't have radio comms once we were in the Tonkwa. Like once I came over, I've never really managed to get hold of him. So it's almost the same as when I fly near my own. <laughs> what have I got for food this time? I don't have any bivy gear. So I'd sleep in the glider, um, I think I've got some fruit, dried fruit, and uh, three liters of water now, four liters of water. I don't know why I love this place so much. It's just beautiful. It's so elemental. It's just landscape on a huge scale. Come on the ditch. What I didn't know was Rob had taken a diversion off the planned route and the road had got worse and worse until he was properly stuck in the sand on his own with no cell phone reception. Rob, Rob, come in for Greg. We had a situation. My inReach messages merrily went onto a web server, which might have amused someone with internet access. If you're gonna go into the backcountry, make sure you both have an inReach unit. Luckily, Rob is resourceful and has a special skill, digging. Hey, there's the last of the sun. So it's going to cool down nicely now. Got to conserve water out here. So I'll do most of my walking in the evening. I'll keep walking now and get out to sort of a major road. Then at least if uh, my retrieve doesn't find me, I can hitchhike with one of the four cars in every day <laughs> to get up to Calvinia. And that's back where we came from. Somewhere over there, that's the Cedarberg. I think that's Snewberg and Tafelberg, the two big ones. Ah, oh, it's so good for the soul to see that this place is unchanged. And it's just vast and it's untouched. And you can still paraglide across it. Ah! So there's more distance that way for he who wants it. Come on down to Cardusi and chase your dreams into the desert. People spend so much time looking for thermals. You don't have to look for thermals, just come to Cardusi. Take off, they're right there for you, waiting for you to fly wherever you want to. Might be a good idea to get a driver though. That's a little spur. 
things that live in holes. Probably best not to poke that. And here we have a rare creature in the Tangkwa Karoo. It lies very, very still and is quite scarce. It's a road. I don't know why they built it, because nothing comes down here. You'll probably see more sort of wildlife tracks than cars. Yeah, there's that desert silence. Yeah. And it was good to a point, then it got uh, uh, oh. I saw someone with a with a carrying a bucket of water. Suddenly I was like, oh, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> Rob's found me! <laughs> All is forgiven! <laughs> it's good to have self-belief. But it's even better to have a friend who believes in you and will go the extra mile to help you reach your dreams. Thanks Rob for being my brew. If you like this kind of story, you'll love the Xpeer race documentary, where I get properly stuck into the Pyrenees mountains. Click the link on screen or search Xpeer story. Visit me on flywithgreg.com to get more skills.